Okay. Uh, thanks everyone for coming to this session. Uh, before I start, uh, let me first introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ben Ye. I'm from Northeastern University, and I'm also one of the maintainers of Dragonfly project. Okay, so uh, today's topic is about the decentralized distribution strategy uh, in Dragonfly. So today's agenda has four parts. Uh, the first part is Dragonfly overview. I will tell you about what is Dragonfly and the Dragonfly's history. Uh, in the second part, I will talk about Dragonfly's architecture and how do Dragonfly components work together. Uh, in the third part, uh, I will introduce our design for the decentralized mode of Dragonfly. Uh, in the last part, uh, I will tell you something about our future work, uh, the roadmap. Uh, okay, uh, let's get into the first part. So the first part is Dragonfly overview. So what is Dragonfly? Uh, Dragonfly is a P2P-based image and file distribution system. Uh, so someone might ask, so why do we need Dragonfly? Uh, I guess everyone here is using uh, Kubernetes. So let's imagine that you have a Kubernetes cluster with more than 1,000 nodes. Uh, so at that time, you deploy a daemon set in your cluster. So simultaneously, more than 1,000 nodes are trying to download the image from your image registry, uh, just like this diagram. So uh, you can see that there is a network bottleneck in your image registry because the load is very high in that uh, image registry, so the whole download process will be very slow. So how can we solve this problem? Uh, what about using uh, a P2P-based uh, distribution solution? Uh, that is what Dragonfly does. So if one peer already download, downloads the image file, then any other peers can just uh, directly download from that peer. So Dragonfly is aim to solve the bottleneck of file and image distribution uh, in large-scale data centers. Uh, to prove its performance, we did a test between two image distribution solutions. Uh, the first is just using Docker pool. Uh, it's the native way. The second way is using Dragonfly. So as you can see from this diagram, uh, as the concurrency becomes much larger, uh, the load on the center image registry becomes much higher in the native way. So the average download time uh, in increases rapidly. But if you are using Dragonfly, uh, you can see that the average download time is quite consistent. So we can conclude that in this scenario, Dragonfly works, uh, has a better performance than the native way. Okay, uh, next, let, let me introduce about the Dragonfly's history. So Dragonfly was born in Alibaba in 2015. Uh, it was initially a file distribution system because at that time, container technologies are not uh, widely adopted in China. Uh, two years later, Dragonfly was open sourced and uh, it became uh, one of the fundamental infrastructures in uh, Alibaba. And at that time, it can distribute 3.4 petabytes data a month. Uh, one year later, Dragonfly joined the CNCF and it became one of the sandbox project. And uh, more than 20 companies are using Dragonfly in, in their production environment. Uh, as for now, actually, Dragonfly is G8 uh, this morning. <laughs> so, and uh, now it can integrate with Kubernetes ecosystem better. Uh, for the future work, we are planning to adapt to more cloud uh, scenarios, and we hope we can enter CNCF uh, incubation stage. Okay. Uh, these are our industry adoptions. Uh, you can see uh, companies from different areas are using Dragonfly. 
uh, such as telecommunication, e-commerce, uh, cloud service providers, and so on. Uh, now let me uh, talk about our integration with other CNCF project. Uh, as for container engine, Dragonfly can natively support, support uh, container D. Uh, its configuration is very simple and I will show you uh, in the uh, next few slides. As for Harbor, um, Harbor is a very famous image registry and the Dragonfly supports uh, preheat functionalities. So the Harbor users can, trick, uh, can send a HTTP request to Dragonfly and the, the Dragonfly will uh, do some image prefetching for later uh, image distribution. Uh, metrics is another uh, very important aspect. Uh, Dragonfly supports Prometheus metrics uh, so that uh, users can display the metrics in some dashboard tools like Grafana. Uh, for Helm, uh, we maintain a Helm chart repo in this address, uh, so uh, you can have a try. And it can help you easily deploy Dragonfly in Kubernetes uh, cluster. So this is all about the first part. So next, let's get into uh, Dragonfly architecture. So for file distribution, Dragonfly mainly needs two uh, components. The first is uh, Dragonfly server, we call it Supernode. And uh, another role is Dragonfly client, which is dfget. Uh, so how do they work together? Let's see. Uh, when the client starts, it will register itself as a peer to Supernode server. So when one uh, peer wants to download some file, uh, it will send a create a task request to the Supernode server. So what is a task? Uh, you can consider it as uh, I want to download this file. So this is a, a task. So after the Supernode server receives this request, it will generate a task ID and uh, send the ID back to the client. So uh, next step, the dfget client will, can use this ID to track the pieces information of that file. Uh, because uh, Supernode is the center server, it maintains the whole status of this cluster, so it, mm, such as peers information, uh, and it uh, also knows uh, whether the requested file uh, exists in the cluster or not. So if the file is, is present in many different peers, uh, the Supernode server will do some scheduling to choose the best peer. So after the scheduling, the client can download the, that file from another peer. So after this process, finally the client will uh, send an update to the server so this step is just say, uh, I have already downloaded this file. So uh, later when other peers want to download the same file, they can directly download from me. Okay, uh, additionally, there is kind of a situation that the requested file is not present in the current uh, cluster. So uh, the super node will act as a CDN node to download from the source. Uh, then the client will directly download from the Supernode server. So that's basically uh, how Dragonfly works uh, in the in file distribution. Uh, next, uh, let's get much deeper in each component. The first is Supernode. Uh, it pro provides many different APIs to interact with dfget client. Uh, and it also do some scheduling because uh, as, as we already mentioned, it, uh, as a supernode, uh, maintains the whole cluster status. So based on this status, it will do scheduling. Uh, as for seeding, uh, we said that supernode will work as a CDN node to download from source. So this is just the initial seeding. Uh, for metrics, because uh, supernode maintains many important uh, information, so we it expose this information to Prometheus metrics and uh, display them in Grafana dashboards. Uh, next 
is dfget. Uh, dfget is just a simply a command line tool. Its usage is quite similar to um, wget or cur, but it also provides many useful functionalities, uh, such as read limiting. Uh, you can imagine that maybe you have uh, run some uh, network bandwidth intensive applications. So during the uh, Dragonfly download process, you don't want the dfget uh, cost too much bandwidth. So you, uh, at that time, you can use this red limiting feature to reserve some bandwidth for your application. Uh, as for checksum, uh, it's the obvious that uh, we don't want to download a broken file, so this integrity check will ensure your downloaded file is correct. So these are the two components for file distribution. Uh, but what about image distribution? So when you want to download image, you just use like a Docker pool, but uh, this process uh, will not involve with Dragonfly. So how does Dragonfly participate in this image download process? Uh, actually, our solution is quite simple. Uh, we just uh, start a proxy in each host, and uh, we configure the registry mirrors to that uh, proxy. So that uh, when your container engine re uh, want receive these download requests, it, it will send the download image request to your configured registry mirror so that uh, Dragonfly will know uh, what image you want to download. So these are the two examples of configuring Docker and uh, ContainerD. Okay. Uh, this is the whole process about uh, downloading one image. Uh, we, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, we start a proxy in each host, and uh, we call it a DFDMO. Uh, you can see from this diagram. Uh, so the so whole step is that user use a Docker command line to pull some kind of images. And uh, the, finally, the image request will reach to the uh, DFDMO. Then DFDMO will f uh, fork a DFGET process. And then DFGET process will try to connect to the, uh, the center server, which is Supernode. It register itself and uh, download from this P2P network. Uh, for the next few steps, this is quite similar to file uh, distribution. So I will skip this part. Uh, OK. Uh, that's how uh, Dragonfly work in file distribution and uh, image distribution. Uh, next, let's talk about uh, our today's main topic, uh, the decentralized mode of Dragonfly. So um, someone might ask, so what, what does it mean? So uh, is, is Dragonfly already decentralized? Uh, but actually, it is not fully decentralized because uh, the diff get clients part is decentralized, decentralized, but we still need to maintain the uh, Supernode server. So some of our users give, give, give us some feedback that uh, it is not easy to maintain the Supernode server. It is quite heavy. Uh, and uh, currently, it uh, can't scale easily because we don't have a perfect, uh, perfect uh, HA solution for Supernodes. And also, I, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, Supernode will sometimes uh, work as a CDN node to fetch the files from source. So it uh, has a high, relatively high demand on its hardware, such as disk I.O., and uh, network bandwidth. So how can we uh, solve this problem? OK, 
can we just uh, find a way to run super, uh, Dragonfly without Supernode? Just like uh, this diagram, can we just use DF, DF, DMO running in each node? So how do we manage to do this? Actually, uh, in order to solve this problem, we should first know what Supernode does. Actually, it's just a server which keeps uh, cluster information in its memory, such as peers information, file pieces information, task information. And then it will do some scheduling based on this uh, information. So what if we find a way to synchronize the peer's status in the cluster? Then uh, each peer will know the whole cluster status. Then it can do the scheduling themselves. So how do we propagate the peer status? Uh, actually, we found a great tool called Surf. Uh, Surf uh, was uh, open sourced uh, by HashCorp, uh, and it is, it is widely used in decentralized applications. Uh, it uses uh, gossip protocols to communicate with each peers, and it also has many great functionalities, such as uh, membership management, uh, failure detection, and uh, recovery. So when one peer uh, fails, and then other peers can detect the failure quickly and try to recover that failed peer. As for custom uh, event propagation, uh, that's what we need because we want to integrate with uh, Dragonfly with Surf. So we just need to define some our own uh, events to pro propagate the information we need, such as uh, file pieces information, uh, peers information. So that's basically uh, our design for propagating these information in the cluster. So what other things should we do? Uh, the first thing is defining a tracker interface. Because in the traditional architecture, we only have two main roles. Uh, the first is Supernode server. Another is dfget client. So these two components uh, talk only via the uh, Supernode API. So in the decentralized mode, we don't have Supernode anymore. So, but we still want to keep the compatibility. Uh, how to achieve this? So the easiest, easiest uh, solution is to define a common tracker interface in the middle. And we just need to implement the, this tracker interface in the decentralized uh, DFDMO so that we don't need to change too much code in the client side. So that's our first thing should, should to do. And the next is about peer discovery. Uh, peer discovery is another very important thing uh, in, uh, in the P2P network because uh, one peer wants to join the cluster, it should first know the address of, it, of the other peers in the cluster. So how do we want to implement this feature? Because we want uh, Dragonfly to adapt to many different scenarios. So we want this feature to be pluggable. Uh, so here we list the three, three kind of ways to do peer discovery. Uh, the first is using Kubernetes API. Uh, Kubernetes has many resources and the API. So when the peer starts, it can fetch this uh, Kubernetes uh, information from its API, such as uh, nodes or endpoints. So through this API, they can connect to uh, the peers in the cluster. Uh, the second way is using Core DNS. Core DNS is uh, used a lot in Kubernetes for service discovery. So if uh, using this way, uh, we can find our other uh, peers just using uh, domain name. 
So this is very easy and simple. Uh, the next way is using Surf Agent. Uh, Surf is not only a library for uh, doing gossip, uh, but it is also a, ser a binary server, so you can run it. So in this situation, we can initially start a Surf Agent in our cluster to work as a DOM node. So when you want to start other peers in your cluster, they can just directly uh, connect to that uh, dummy node and uh, join this P2P cluster. Uh, so the next thing is about our custom events for Dragonfly. So what type of events should we define? Uh, here we define three type of events. Uh, the first is about file events, because Dragonfly itself is a file and image distribution system. So we should uh, propagate the file pieces information among other peers. So here we define three type of file events. First is a download initialization event. This is used to notify other peers that uh, I start downloading uh, some file. Uh, then later, maybe they can download from this peer. The second type of file event is a download progress event because uh, in Dragonfly, we split the file downloading process into several pieces. So this is used uh, to uh, let other peers know that uh, how many pieces have you already downloaded and uh, whether the whole download process is, is finished or not. So when the process is finished, they can download from that peer. Uh, the last event is file remove event. So mm, because uh, the disk uh, has maximum capacity, uh, so sometimes you need to do like garbage collection or clean up uh, your disk space. So when you delete these files, you need to notify other peers as well so that they uh, can't uh, download this file from that peer. And uh, another two type of event, uh, the first is length event, because uh, when you download a file, uh, the peer needs to calculate the file length. So when the uh, file length is calculated by one peer, it can uh, propagate this event to other peers. So that other peers don't need to calculate this uh, file length again. Uh, another type of event is recovery event uh, because in a distributed system, uh, peers may uh, have a possibility to be uh, crashed. So when it's uh, crashed and recovered, it needs to synchronize with other peers to get the latest uh, cluster information. So when it uh, restarts, it can send this uh, recover event to other peers. Then other peers m can send back the uh, recover the latest uh, cluster information to that peer. So this is our defined uh, custom events. So this is the final design for our decentralized architecture. Actually, this is quite similar to the previous diagram, but in this architecture, we don't have Supernode anymore. We just only have each uh, host running uh, DF demo. So when the DF demo starts, it will try to connect to the init node or some other peer discovery mechanism. It will send a register request, and then the init node will send back the peers already in that cluster. So after the first two steps, uh, the peer will join into this gossip cluster. Then they can, uh, it can synchronize with uh, other peers, uh, such as file information and the peers information. So in the fourth step, when it wants to download some kind of files, it can do the scheduling itself uh, because 
uh, it has enough information so it can know whether the, uh, uh, the requested file uh, is present in other peers or not. Uh, if not, it can directly download from the source or the registry or the registry. So if the file is present, it can just directly download from other peers. Uh, okay, so that's basically uh, the third part uh, is our decentralized version of Dragonfly. So this is the last part, the roadmap. Um, Dragonfly wants to have more features. Uh, it's nice to have more, in, uh, more encryption methods supported and more file transferring protocol. And we also want to implement a front end dashboard for displaying the cluster status in Dragonfly. And uh, we also want to support more uh, scenarios to do more performance optimization, such as uh, cloud or uh, Internet of Things scenarios. Uh, besides, we also want to support more computing architectures uh, like ARM. So as for ecosystem, uh, we want to integrate with open tracing and uh, it's better to make Dragonfly more Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes native. So we want to support operator as well. So if you are interested in our future work, uh, you can check out about the uh, roadmap in our GitHub. Okay, uh, this is uh, our logo and uh, our GitHub repo. So uh, that's all about this talk. Okay, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, I think we still have maybe uh, six minutes for Q&A part. Uh, uh, please stop because uh, there is another Dragonfly maintainer here. Okay. <laughs> um, so in this work with the private uh, registry, which require authentication? Uh, is, I'm, I'm sorry, so you mean which feature? Um, so Dragonfly? Oh, Dragonfly can support uh, a private registry in many, maybe several months ago. Yeah, it can already support it. Okay. Yep. Mm. You just need to configure it in your uh, DFDMO config file to load the certificate and keys. So yeah, you can check out our GitHub. Um, have you guys approached any of the major uh, cloud providers, Google, AWS, see if they can support it on GKE? Because like I don't think I get the chance to you know set up the registry mirror on the nodes, right? Like this is like pretty awesome, but I don't think I can use it in an environment where I don't where I don't get to manage all the config. Oh uh, yeah, uh, because uh, in this slide I only shows the way to configure the registry mirrors, but in Dragonfly we also support the proxy process uh, by using the uh, environment variable. Um, you can check out our document. Uh, oh. We can configure the uh, HTTP proxy or HTTPS proxy uh, in the Docker in Docker or container disk configuration file, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it works. Yeah, I think that's the, like, the key part, that like, in a managed environment, you don't get to configure those things. Oh. Yeah, OK. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, probably related to the first question. So how about authorization? So normally, Harbor hosts a bunch of images, right? And user A can pull image A, but user B cannot pull image B, right? So, and in Kubernetes plane, uh, user normally set uh, docker pull secrets. So does the secret information 
can be handled Dragonfly properly? Mm. So I guess this question is related to the uh, integration with, uh, with Harbor, right? Yes, or uh, private Docker registry can have authorization feature, right? Mm, actually, currently, Dragonfly uh, don't have the support for uh, Kubernetes resources uh, secrets. Uh, as for integrating with Harbor, actually, mm, Dragonfly already supports this preheat functionality, but in Harbor side, mm, they are trying to uh, provide an interface for other different kind of P2P solutions such as Kraken, and maybe you have already heard about it. So mm, for this integration, uh, in Harbor UI, uh, there will be a button, so when the user, uh, the user can, trigger, can click this button and uh, trigger the image pro fetching process uh, in, in the uh, Dragonfly, just uh, uh, send a HTTP request. So, but for um, Kubernetes secrets, uh, I think th uh, we currently we don't have this support. Okay, thank you. But actually, I don't think Dragonfly needs to know those secrets. So when you pull image, it actually, from the Docker or container deposit, it's just a HTTP header. When you pass it to the proxy, proxy just translate the send header to the bridge by itself. Just no interception or, I guess the problem just, just works. Or uh, Docker Flow and client can perform authorization directly with. Yeah, yeah, so that's the same. When you config the like, image pull secrets, that's going to be translated into a Docker config, right? When you call the Docker API. At the end, Docker just sends the, send the request with the header. It, it doesn't matter whether is private or public. Thanks. So the uh, decentralized uh, super node, is that, uh, or is that a roadmap or is already uh, GA? So as, as Ben just said, it's, it's still in our design phase. It's not in GA, at, at least not in today's version. It's still in our design phase. But the most the collaboration work is to um, you know, I propose this topic. Uh, I'm proposing decentralized uh, design doc, and that actually that's a experiment in eBay environment. We are using Surf. We are using the distribution without a centralized node. Uh, so we are working together. We're mov moving our internal implementation to public. So hopefully, I guess, should be so. Stay tuned. Have you guys uh, benchmarked Surf? Like, what's the same number of nodes to have in these clusters? And also, like, when, um, it, like, in the case where there's a high churn rate on the nodes, let's say you're using like Spot VMs or Prime Dual VMs, how would that play out? Yeah, the question is, how about the performance of Surf? Um, we didn't do the test LMP at the Surf level, but we do the LMP at the higher level. We really test the performance when you like. Our test case shows when you have 2,000 nodes, all of them want to put a 1.5 gigabyte image, which normally some would want to image 1.5. Um, I think the result is good. Almost five minutes, 90 percentile can download the image successfully. But the surf performance, I believe from the official document, it says, so when we talk about surf performance, we are talking about how long it can quickly converge. The states. So per their document, they're saying even when you have like 5K nodes, like maybe 1% 1, 1 of packet loss, you can still convert the state within like three or four seconds. Hi. Um, so in the P2P world, um, how do you prevent a bad actor or bad node from distributing files that are not part of, um, well, that are not intended? Yes. Uh, so the question is about uh, how to prevent a malicious, malicious uh, peer? Sure, yeah. Uh, in the P2P network? Yep. 
from distributing files that you know has been tampered with essentially. Uh, so, mm, so for this question, actually, uh, we have a integrated check because. Uh, so uh, I will talk about this uh, integrated check because uh, we do the in integrated check based on the hash of the uh, of the file of the file URL and uh, some other things because we can configure the uh, the MD5 uh, during the during the start of each client. So uh, in this uh, P2P network, so the uh, the file from one URL. So if they are correct, they must have uh, the same hash. Yeah. So um, I don't sure that that the malicious node can get the same MD5 uh, when it starts. So if it don't have the same uh, secret uh, MD5 configuration, so uh, it can't pass the integrity check. Yeah, so from, yeah, the, 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 for, for Docker image, itself is content addressable. So you already get the hash sum, the sharp 256. Um, what, do you have like numbers on like, you know, average image size that you guys are like, you know, transferring and stuff like that and like times, like in production environments? Like, are people using this because they just don't want to put, you know, or they don't want to put too much stress on the registry or because their images are, like, you know, too big and they rather just do this, like, peer-to-peer -peer thing? Uh, so I think the first question is, what does look in production scale, what's the numbers, right? Um, so first of all, the decentralized mode is not in public. So what I'm going to share is uh, eBay specific numbers. Um, so we are running like 2,000 nodes with five or 10 pro proxy nodes. That's a, that's a rigid proxy. Um, but the, the most use case is for big images. Like, because we are running a simulation, a simulation means you get you're not running the simplest. You may get like 1.5 gigabytes or 2.5 gigabytes or some maybe five gigabytes, and the the, the cross size is pretty large, like 5k nodes. I guess we have we have one cluster with Hadoop use case because the image is big and the cross size is like more than 2,000 or 3,000. That's a scale. Um, what's the second question? Yeah, yeah. I think both. I think both. So, you want to reduce the load on the storage side. You also want to imp improve the efficiency as well. Any more questions? Uh, uh, any more questions? I think we are running out of time. Thanks for joining. Okay. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>